Uh, do you believe that the files will be produced today and what happens if they're not? Well, I think it's an interesting day for the Home Office. Its reputation is on the line in many respects. The Permanent Secretary, as you point out, was questioned about these files uh, just a few days ago and, and he was set a, a relatively tight deadline to come up with the names of the files and, and more information about what happened to them. Uh, if he doesn't do that, then concerns will certainly uh, be raised. We know that Theresa May said just on Monday at the announcement of the inquiry uh, that one of her key principles was to was transparency well this is the test of the home offices uh, transparency providing these uh, files if they're not produced uh, then I'm pretty sure the chairman uh, Keith Faz uh, for the Home Affairs Select Committee will have something to say and could well call the permanent secretary back uh, to answer further questions and explain himself Mr Danchik, you've been at the forefront of this campaign uh, trying to get answers over these missing files. What's been the reaction to your position within Westminster and in the wider area? I think it's been welcomed. I, I've had a number of uh, parliamentarians from all political parties uh, coming up to me and, and saying keep uh, keep going, keep doing the work that you're doing. It is a cross-party campaign, not just me, Tessa Munt MP, Tom Watson, Zach Goldsmith, Tim Lawton, all doing good uh, work on this and I think it's well received out there in the public and it's certainly been well received by the survivors of uh, child sex abuse. We have got the inquiry but it does need to go further, it needs to get started. Uh, and we need to get to the bottom of what were some horrific crimes in the 70s, 80s and probably into the 1990s. OK, Simon Danchuk, thank you for joining us this morning.